Hola! I'm Cristina. Yo soy Andrés. And together we are Uno, Dos, Tres, Andrés. You might have heard our song, Ten Little Birds. Andrés, but this is oceans of possibilities. I have an idea. What if, what if, what if we changed it? Lo cambiamos, pero, pero ¿cómo? Son diez pajaritos. Yeah, but this is oceans of possibilities, right? We can change it. Hmm. How about this? Fueron dos pececitos. ¿Cuántos quedaron? Eight little fish under the sea. Two swam away. How many stay? Dos pececitos más se fueron. ¿Cuántos quedan ahora? Okay, Cristina, now let's sing it in Spanish. Seis pececitos nadando en el mar. Dos se fueron. Vamos a contar. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Cuatro pececitos nadando en el mar. Se fueron dos. Ahora vamos a contar. Cristina, se están yendo los pececitos. ¿Cuánto nos quedan? Uno, dos. Muy bien. Dos pececitos nadando en el mar. Se fueron dos. Ahora vamos a contar. Cristina, ya no hay pececitos. Andrés, the fish swam away. There's no fish left. Why did that happen? Why did the fish go away? Well, Cristina, there are many reasons why fish can leave an area. Maybe they migrate and go to a different part of the ocean. Hmm. Or another reason is pollution. What if the water is so polluted that the fish can't live there anymore? Ah, that's so sad. I've read about rivers that are so polluted that no fish can live in them. But you know what? There's hope. There are some rivers that communities have turned around and the fish have come back. Like what? For example, in England, the River Thames crosses London, and in some parts of it, there were no fish at all. And you know what? After lots of people put great effort in cleaning and supporting the River Thames, now the harbor seals and the gray seals are back. And the seals are back because the fish are back! Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. They're back, Cristina. Come on, fish. Everybody move your fins. Everybody move your fins. Everybody move your tail. Everybody move your tail. Hey, watch out for the seals. <laughs> move your fins. Move your fins. Move your fins. Move your fins. Move your tails. Move your tail. Move your tails. Move your tail. Pececitos. 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 Welcome to Oceans of Possibilities. Bienvenidos a Océanos de Posibilidades. And now I have another idea. Oh, that's the ASL sign for idea. Use your pinky, go like this, and that's idea. Idea. And what is your idea? What if we traveled back to the Virginia Aquarium and Marine Science Center in Virginia Beach, Virginia? Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Virginia Aquarium and Marine Science Center. Let's go on an adventure. Hey, Will. They said they had diamonds, but I cannot find one. Well, so we do have diamonds, and they're very special ones. You have diamonds? Awesome! Where do I get it? Right there. Wait a minute. Is that turtle wearing a diamond? Not quite. This is a diamondback terrapin. And they're a very special type of turtle we have here in Virginia. Diamondback terrapin. Hmm? They get their name, if we look real closely at their shells, they have a diamond shape inside their scales. Oh, wow, so that's the diamond everybody's talking about. Mm -hmm. And why is it so famous here at the aquarium? So the diamondback terrapin is a very special type of turtle. It's one of few turtles in the world that can live in both fresh and brackish water. So. Brackish water, I don't know that word. What does it mean, brackish water? 
So brackish water is a mix of fresh and salt water. The habitat of the diamondback terrapin is what we call an estuary, sure. where the ocean or a bay meets fresh water. Wait a minute. We are here in Virginia Beach and the Chesapeake Bay is right here and the ocean is right here. So is this an estuary? The Chesapeake Bay is the largest estuary in North America. Ooh. So are there a lot of diamondback terrapin? We do find them. They are common. Uh, however, their populations are declining due to crab pots. Entonces, están en riesgo. Are they in risk? In some places, they are at risk. Mm, that's really bad. I wish we could have like an invention that can help save them. You know what Will shared with me? What? That the terrapins are at risk. Really? Yes. Crabbers put out crab pots in the bay to catch crabs to eat. Okay. But there's a problem. Diamondback terrapins are getting caught in those crab pots. That is a problem. But maybe you can think of an idea of how to help the terrapins. And prevent them from getting caught in the crab pots. Well, to warm up our brain and spark some ingenuity, here's a song full of ideas. <gasps> Tengo una idea. Vamos a cantar. Una idea tengo yo, una idea tengo yo. Quiero ser un inventor para hacer el mundo mejor. I can have a new idea. I can think and say what if something different and unexpected. I can dream and imagine it. A lot of the things we use every day were new at some point. Anyone can be an inventor. Look at these inventions. El papel, el ascensor, los robots, la cremallera son inventos que empezaron tan solo con una idea. Una idea tengo yo, una idea tengo yo. Quiero ser un inventor para hacer el mundo mejor. ¿Qué haces, Cristina? Estoy leyendo acerca de Guillermo González Camarena. Cuéntame más. Guillermo González Camarena fue un gran inventor. Él nació en México y con sus ideas el mundo cambió. Solo tenía 17 años cuando una idea se le ocurrió que a todos les permitió ver la televisión a color. about inventors. Keep thinking of ideas and you will become an inventor too. What if, what if, what if there was something that could help the diamondback terrapins? Hmm. I wish we had like an invention that could help save the diamondback. We do. You do? Hmm? You have an amazing invention? Where is it? It's right here. Uh, Will, come on. Come on, Will. This is just like a plastic rectangle. We need like a great invention. Well, so this is all we need. How so? So this is called a bycatch reduction device. Bycatch reduction device. That sounds cool. It is. Mm -hmm. So the way it works is it's attached to the front of the crab pot and the crabs can still get in. Mm -hmm. But if the diamondback, if the terrapin is too large to fit through this, it can't get into the crab pot. If it's small enough to fit through this, it can get back out of the crab pot. Let me see if I get this correctly. The diamondback is in danger because when we fish for crab, we're catching some diamondbacks by mistake, right? Mm -hmm. 
So if they put this on the trap, the turtle cannot get in. Exactly. So, hey, can I, can I take this one to Virginia and Maryland and everywhere and gift it to fishermen? Yes, you can. So everybody's getting this for the holidays, one of these, all right? And put it on your crab pot, all right? Great invention, talking about inventions and innovation, anything is possible, even saving the Diamondback Terrapin. I had learned about the Diamondback Terrapin and the bycatch reduction device. I was learning a lot about turtles. Hey Will, Christina is coming in a second, but you know, I think I know a lot by now, so just, just let me take care of it, all right. Christina. Hey. Hey, look. Well, I'm an expert now, and I wanted to tell you more about these turtles. I know everything about turtles. It's very easy. They have four legs. They all have really hard shell, and they're super cute, and we have a couple here. Am I right? You're very close. Okay. So not all turtles have a hard shell. Not all turtles have a hard shell. Oh, no. So in this one, we have a eastern spiny soft shell turtle. And its shell is soft? Mm hmm. So his shell, unlike the diamondbacks up here, isn't hard. It feels a lot more like leather. And can it, could it even fold or? Around the edges, it can stretch a little bit, but the inside or the center of the turtle is still his body. So we don't want to fold it. How does it behave differently because it has a soft shell? So with that soft shell, they move a little faster. So they're better able to run away from predators and he'll also bury himself in the gravel or in the sand to hide. And then he's got that long neck and that kind of pointed nose mm -hmm. that let him stick his head out when he's buried and search for food without exposing his whole body. For the other turtles and the terrapins, their hard shell protects them in case they have predators, but the soft shell can't just hide in its shell because it, its shell doesn't offer that much protection. It does not. It sounds like having a soft shell, it has to protect itself more from predators, so that's why it's a faster swimmer. Yep. So it's got to be able to run away more, and it does need to be able to hide. The terrapins and the soft shell can pull in their legs and pull in their head, but you're right, the terrapin has that hard shell to keep something from eating it. The soft shell needs to hide in order to keep away from predators that can bite through that shell. Now I was curious about where the soft-shelled turtles live. So we do have a, a population of soft shells in Virginia, um, and then they are common across the eastern United States. So unlike the diamondback terrapin though, they can't go into brackish or salt water. So they need to have fresh water. They do. We learned so much about these awesome turtles, but now... Remember this sign? Oh yeah, that's the ASL sign for idea. Now here's another sign in ASL. Mm -hmm. Touch the tips of your fingers Así? together and flip. ¿Qué, ¿Qué es esto, Cristina? This is the sign for community. Oh, comunidad. Mi comunidad, mi comunidad Tiene muchos ayudantes que trabajan sin parar My community, my community has lots of special people helping you and me. Who are some of the community helpers? Well, let me tell you about some of them, Christina. Everybody, hear the siren? When a building catches fire. Call 911. You can hear the firefighter. Wee 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 wee. What's another community helper? Let's walk. When I walk to school each morning, who will stop the cars? Someone's at the corner waving. It's the crossing this guard. Is... Stop. Mi comunidad, mi comunidad, tiene muchos ayudantes que trabajan sin parar. My community, my community, has lots of special people helping you and me. Cuando yo estoy enferma, sientes dolor. Cuida la enfermera. Estarás mejor. Cuando me mandan una carta. Es de mi abuelo. Quien te la lleva a la puerta. El cartero. Mi comunidad, mi comunidad. Tiene muchos ayudantes que trabajan sin parar. My community, my community. Has lots of special people helping you and me. I can think of community. 
community helpers like bus drivers, librarians, oh, and interpreters. Now, Christina, we are in oceans of possibilities. Here are some of the community members that help in the ocean and the sea. Andres, what about marine biologists who study the animals and the plants in the ocean? Oh yeah, and what about the lifeguards that keeps us safe when we go swimming? <laughs> That's right, and you know, just like there's police officers who keep people safe in cities and towns on land, there's the Coast Guard working oh. to keep people safe in the ocean. All right, ready? <laughs> Why don't we sing it again? While we swim, here we go, everybody. Mi comunidad, mi comunidad tiene muchos ayudantes que trabajan sin parar. My community, my community has lots of special people helping you and me. Mi comunidad. And just like people live in a community, Living things live in a community as well. We call that an ecosystem. Esa comunidad se llama ecosistema. In an ecosystem, there are many different kinds of animals and plants that live and work together. En un ecosistema hay muchos seres vivos que interactúan, viven y trabajan juntos. Now we're headed back to the aquarium to visit one of these ecosystems. So the next exhibit we're going to is one of my favorites in the aquarium. This is our Red Sea Tunnel. And so this area is built to look like the Red Sea. It's that area between Saudi Arabia and Egypt. And it's what we call rifting. So the area is actually moving apart. Wow. And when that happens, you get a lot of warm water as well as a lot of nutrients in that water. So you get massive blooms of life and you get a lot of colors, as well as a lot of biological diversity. Biological diversity, what do you mean? So in this aquarium, we have dozens of species of fish, and in the Red Sea, there are thousands. So we've got the bigger guys over here are called bat fish. Uh, we have a fox face rabbit fish, kind of the yellow one back there with the heart. I see some that look like they have noses. Those are our unicorn tang. And then we've got a clown wrasse over here. That's the blue one with the white stripe. A clown wrasse? Uh -huh. And I see some animals that are not just fish. We do have two in here that are quite incredible. Uh, those are our spotted eagle stingrays. Wow, the stingrays were swimming right over us. And then... Right up at the top, behind our two stingrays, is our zebra shark. And all of these animals, and many, many more, live together in the Red Sea in the wild. They do. So in their natural habitat, the spotted eagle rays and the zebra shark would be chilling around inside the reefs. Our fish over here would be hanging in larger schools, uh, or on their own, under and around the corals but this is almost exactly like their natural habitat. The rays and the sharks, they're predators, aren't they? So they are predators to some animals in here, um, but none of their food lives in this aquarium. Instead, the way we feed these guys is called target feeding. Target feeding, what do you mean? So each one of our rays and our zebra shark have their own individual symbol, their own sign that they come to for food. So some of them have a triangle um, and they're different colors. Uh, one of them has a square, one has a circle. Um, and they're a different size, shape, color. We do target feeding with a lot of our animals in the aquarium. And one of the things it lets us do is keep track of exactly how much they're eating. So each individual ray and each individual shark knows what its symbol is and that is the only place that it goes for food. It's not even about place, so it's about the symbol itself. So sometimes we can feed them over here, or if we put the symbol down on that side, they'll come over there for food too. It knows, it is trained to know that that shape, that symbol, is food for it. Exactly. 
So that means that the rays and the sharks have to have good eyesight to be able to distinguish their symbol, and they have to be pretty smart to be able to be trained like that. They do have pretty good eyesight, as well as they can be very intelligent animals. What else could you train a ray or a shark to do? So we could ask it to go to several different locations before we gave it food. So we could ask it to hit one symbol, two symbol, maybe even a third. Wow, these animals are so incredible and special. I didn't know that rays and sharks were that smart. What else is unique about them? So one of my favorites to talk about is the colors on our zebra shark. So they get the name zebra. Does it look like a zebra? Not really, there's no stripes. It looks more like a panther or a jaguar. It does, it's got those spots. They get the name zebra shark because when they hatch out of their egg, they have black and white stripes. And then as they get larger, those stripes will actually stretch and become the spots. Why do you think it does that? It's a method of camouflage. So when they're younger, when they are very small, they need to be able to hide from predators. That black and white stripe is an example of disruptive coloration. It makes it really hard for a predator to see them moving in the coral and pick them out against the coral. They probably blend in with the shadows and the zigzags of the coral itself. Exactly. Disruptive coloration. Oh, we learned about another kind of fish that uses disruptive coloration in our last episode. Check out episode two to find out which one. Now, back to the Red Sea and the stingrays and sharks. One of the ones that I find really cool about the stingrays and the shark as well is something called counter shading. So when the rays swim away, you'll see that the top of the ray is a very dark color. Yep, I can see that. It's dark on the top where the bottom of the ray is very light. I see it. The ray's belly is light. Counter shading is when the top is dark and the bottom is light, so that if a predator is looking at them from the top, they blend in with the darker C4 below. And if it's looking at them from the bottom, they blend in with the lighter surface of the ocean. Several fish will also use that counter shading so that when they're swimming along the bottom, it makes it hard for a shark to look down and go, hmm, that looks tasty. This is a method very common in the ocean. It's used among many different animals from fish all the way up to seals. It's time to leave the Red Sea, but we'll be back at the aquarium soon. ¿Qué tal si jugamos con las sílabas? Escucha. Listen, we're going to change the vowels on this song. Vamos a empezar con la canción normal. La mar estaba serena. hace falta una vocal. ¿Qué vocal? I think we're missing one vowel from this game. Listos. La mar está 
estaba la mar. The sea was so calm. La mar estaba serena. Will, you've been teaching us so much about animals, about the aquarium. Uh, can I teach you something? Absolutely. Okay, here's a word. Say, foca. 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 Now say, ¿Dónde están las focas? ¿Dónde están las focas? Where are the seals? Ah, they are in our exhibit right behind us. Seals are, are super cute, but you, you shouldn't get close to a seal, right? No, you absolutely should not. So seals, just like us, appreciate their personal space. Um, they are also protected under the Marine Mammal Protection Act. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought we were in an aquarium where we have a lot of fish. A mammal? They are a mammal. So seals are what's referred to as a marine mammal. So a mammal that spends most or all of its time in the ocean. They're doing a nice show for us. And I'm sure you know the name of these two seals. ¿Cómo se llama la foca? So the one swimming in the back with a really one. black and white spot pattern, uh -huh. this is Hector. So Hector comes to us from the Pacific. That's why he has that black and white pattern, that nice, black and white spot, those rings, uh -huh. help his color blend in better with the Pacific coast instead of our Atlantic coast, which is much more sandy, kind of browns and grays. Mm -hmm. So the other seal out here today is Rudder. And you'll notice he's more kind of tannish gray with spots. Those spots blend in better with the sandy coast that we have here in Virginia. Hector and Rudder's coloring was different to help each one blend in with the ocean where they are from. Hector in the Pacific, Rudder in the Atlantic. But there are some things about their bodies that they have in common, like their flippers. So you'll notice the flippers on a seal tuck in very close to its body, and they're very short. So when these guys move on land, they kind of bounce. And I'm gonna teach you a really cool word. It's called galumphing. Galumping. Mm -hmm. So that is the name given to the bounding that a seal does on land. So there you have it. Seals galumph on land, but in the water, they swim. I'm noticing that they're swimming kind of upside down. Their bellies are up. Why are they swimming in that position? So with them swimming upside down so long, it's a sign that they're extremely comfortable here at the aquarium. Seals are one of the types of animals that have something called countershading. Oh yeah, countershading, like the stingrays. Dark on top, light on the bottom. Now countershading works because when something is looking down from the top at them, they, their dark top blends in better with the dark bottom. And when something is looking from the bottom up, their lighter belly blends in with the lighter surface. When these guys swim upside down, they ruin that. That light belly is exposed to the surface, so that dark top is exposed to the bottom. That they do it here is a sign that they're comfortable. They're not worried about anything trying to eat them. And what about the seals eating something? How much food can a seal eat every day? So that really depends on the size of the seal as well as the time of year. One of the coolest things I like about seals is that they can change their body by almost 100 pounds when they're full grown, depending on the time of year. So they like to eat mollusks, uh, they like to eat squids, they like eating crabs and small fish. And as the winter comes on and they need to get heavier, they'll eat more so that they can grow a layer of fat on their body called blubber. The blubber. Mm -hmm. And that blubber helps keep them warm. When the summer starts to come on and the water starts getting warmer, they don't need that winter blubber anymore. So they'll start eating less and they'll lose that weight. Will explained that no matter what time of the year it is, seals don't really like warm water. These guys are a cold water animal. We can't quite see them in the summer. They do come down to Virginia, uh, usually late December through January, February, and a little bit of March. And then as our water here starts to warm up, they head back north to the Northeast and Canada. Uh, but these guys much prefer cold water. And so this exhibit does not get above 65 degrees. Very cold. It was time for us to say goodbye to Hector and Rudder the Seals. Stay cool. Amigos, we had a great time exploring with you. Thank you for all your ideas. Gracias por tantas ideas. 
This is oceans of possibilities. Océanos de posibilidades. And if this is the first episode you see, go and look for the other two. You're gonna learn so much. For now, everybody show me the palm of your hand. Uh -huh. Two fingers like a letter V. Flip them over and make them bounce. This is the sign for jumping. Salta. Un, dos, tres. Dale. Salta, salta. Uno, dos, tres. Salta, salta. Uno, dos, tres. Salta, salta. Uno, dos, tres. When they're on land, they kind of bounce, and that's called galumphing. Let's try galumphing. Galumphing, 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 galumphing. Go seals, go seals. Keep galumphing and jumping. Say, salta, salta, ora das tres. Salta, salta, ora das tres. Salta, salta. What if we go to the Arctic and we freeze? Uno, dos, tres, uno, dos, tres. Agachados, todos abajo, saltamos juntos a la cuenta de tres. Uno, dos, tres, salta. Salta, una, dos, tres Salta, salta, uno, dos, tres Salta, salta, uno, dos, tres Andrés in oceans of possibilities Adiós